So I leave the house at 6 in the morning, and then directly after school at 3.30, I go, hop on the bus and go to work with uh, 25 kids. I didn't understand that I was going to be getting up that early, probably for the rest of my life. I was finding it difficult to get good jobs, like, and to get interviews or anything like that. It was getting really frustrating. And you can get well-paid ones, like working at restaurants, I can make good money. I'm not trying to be 50 years old working as a waitress. I decided that it would be better to have something to fall back on. So I needed something where I was going to be able to, in 10 years, accumulate like four or five properties so that I could always have something to fall back on. Three months is a long time to be busy all day. I'm just putting myself further and further in debt in this class with the understanding that it's worth the sacrifice, eating like ramen for three months. It's not fun, but I think it's gonna be worth it. I think so. We all wanna graduate. We all tired of this class. <laughs> Been here like 11 weeks. One more week to go. I need to get these plans, y'all, because I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Let's take one and pass it out. Let's take one and pass it out. My main purpose is to get uh, the, the recruits uh, prepared for the, the construction trade. So what you do is you're going to get a two by six. They're sitting on the saw horses right there. They already marked 10 feet. We're going to cut 10 feet, and everybody going to get one. And you're going to measure up six inches, and you're going to put a mark all the way around. You sure you got eight feet? As a journeyman carpenter, you have to let them know what's expected, and they need to know the basic, just the basic stuff to get going on the trade. The main thing, they need to know um, just the way to carry themselves on the job and the, the hustle. And you can't work in your gloves. The carpenters don't work in gloves. You can't nail and nail right You can't nail and nail in gloves. Actually, my part is really a small part. My part is really the best part, uh, the part that, that really teaches them how to go out and fish rather than go to the fish market. My job is to actually teach them how to go fish when the fish market is closed. But see, it requires some thinking. And this is what I'm talking about. When you go on the job site, they're going to pay you $20, 15 $30 an hour. You got to be able to think. You got to be able to figure stuff out. You gotta be able to get the job done in, in a record time, no excuses. One of the things that we try to teach about the construction trades is your attitude going to work, uh, how uh, employers look upon new workers, and it's all about profit, profitability, productivity. So a lot of what we do, it's not about how necessarily uh, how many swings it takes to drive uh, you know, a duplex nail, but it's about do you have the right attitude? Can you uh, show up on time and can you make the company money? 12.5 times 15, right? And what'd you come up with, Fred? 187.5. I don't mind if you use a calculator. Some testing areas will let you do that, some won't. The students go through approximately 420 some hours of training. We operate at the Evans campus of the community college. We operate a 12-week full-time program, 7 to 3.30. Just to give you a reality check, if you were going to figure out how much flooring you need, basically you round things up. The average age of individuals in the trades is, is in the 40s from what we're, we're told, and in the 50s, quite frankly, and those folks are going to be get, getting ready to retire, and what we see is a void. The average plaster is probably making between 60 and 80,000 a year, and probably more than that with benefits. But it, it's hard work, I'm not gonna lie. You know, if you like working with your hands, if you're creative, if you like looking at a building and say, I did that finish and that building's there for about 100 years. If you come to my program, you'll work for any plasters union in the country. I guarantee you that. They won't qualify people. They, they come in to recruit, and we've sent people to the plasters. We sent them to the uh, drywallers, to the carpenters, and I've seen some even go to the electricians and the plumbers. So we're very conscious of who we give a job referral to. 
We work with the largest contractors in the region and in all of California. We look at the skills part as far as what you could do with a hammer and nail, but there's also some other components, the soft skills part. To be able to be a team player, to be able to take directions without conflict, to be able to be precise and punctual, things like this is the things that you would need to help you keep your job. As we look at the interviews that you guys done last week, we will be doing, we will be looking uh, we'll be looking at the interviews today, and we'll be doing the critiquing from the paper. Where would you see yourself professionally, say, two years from now? Hmm. Um, two years, three years, five years, ten years. I see myself as completing, um, getting my associate in science degree. I was thinking back last week when we came in, we were talking about interviewing. There was so much thinking going on initially about you know interviewing and how we was going to do it, but I recall you uh, stepping up and saying that you would go first. I feel like me, as an African-American woman, and as an older woman with children, I feel like I have to set an example. A lot of people don't know how to deal with uh, anger and uh, conflicts and stuff like that. They don't know. A lot of these kids up in here, they look up to me. So if I go out there and do something and don't set an example, then they're going to follow me. But since I've been such a positive role model, coming to school every day, going back from break, uh, going back to lunch, some of those kids pick up on that, and I can see the improvement in them. One thing that I, well, that I already knew, but the class helped reinstate in me is just that you really have to be checking yourself. Now we're all grown adults. Right there. Okay, go ahead, Margo. I try to be motivated in like everything that I do in my life because. Um, if you don't, if you don't encourage yourself to do something, or if you don't do things for yourself, um, you can't expect that somebody else is going to come do it for you. Some people didn't make it to class because um, they just got a bad attitude about it, you know, and they decided it wasn't worth it. Very nice. When you do something, you have to understand why you're doing it, and you can't just come in here and say this is going to be. I'm going to make some good money real quick. Construction's not like that. You really have to want to do it because it's not easy work. You really have to want to get up in the morning and go to work, really, like do physical labor for eight hours. I worked in uh, the corporate world with uh, biotechnology companies and pharmaceutical companies on the East Coast, and I was a recruiter. I was getting too tired, and, 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 I, and I felt sluggish. Watch them. Watch them. That's the proper way to lay gravel. Hello. I knew from the first day we were outside and we were building uh, concrete form walls that being outside, having the sun on my face, climbing around on a ladder, hammering, and and the actual physical labor, I just knew it was something that I would enjoy, that I could say, I, I'll put 15 years into this and maybe not uh, retire a multimillionaire, but retire healthy and feel good about the work that I've done. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of this program. I kind of wish I paid a little, more, uh, a little bit more attention in class. <laughs> <laughs> For real, because man, I'd be sore. Any, any tradesman, uh, greatest accomplishment is when you can drive by a building, a bridge, and you say, I helped build that bridge. I helped build that, that building down on Market Street. But the most greatest reward for me now is to say, my student, I taught that student to work on the Bay Bridge. I taught the student that's up there operating that crane. That student was in my class and, and went through city building, and I had a lot to do with it. Our goal is to have a core group of people, and we're hoping that that's well over 50% of our graduates, not only complete their apprenticeship, but become journey people and, and really, you know, upstanding good role models and citizens. The largest public works that our uh, city has seen are, and many, many years are going on right now. Um, the private project at one Rincon Hill, a uh, huge, you know, project. We've had uh, five or six people work on that project thus far. The uh, rebuilding of the Academy of Science in, in Golden Gate Park, another huge project. The rebuilding of our uh, public hospital, Laguna Honda. This is ongoing work with many of the same contractors who can move uh, successful apprentices from one project to another and keep them working for, you know, several years. There's the construction workers of the future who become the superintendents, the construction you know, owners. That's, that's, that's the perfect scenario right there. That's success.